right, so some of you may be asking, why would you want to change your final drive on your Africa Twin? And it's an important question. It's worth asking and it's worth answering. So I'm going to give you my opinion on the matter. Um, on road, off the road. On the road, I feel like the final gearing will give me a little bit more straight line speed from a dead stop at an intersection or any other time I'm at a dead stop and I want to go fast. Um, I also believe that it'll give me a little bit more excitement in the seat while cornering um, that initial kind of hit coming out of corners. Now, those are very um, good reasons for me to want to change that, but it's not the primary reasons. The primary reasons that I'm changing my final drive gearing is for off-road performance. Um, the Africa Twin has a very good linear power band um, no matter what RPM or gear that you're in, it does have a very good linear power band, but I feel like it lacks torque in the lower gears one through three. So this final drive will allow me to um, have a little bit more torque and to be able to lift my front end when I want that to happen. There's many times that you want to get over obstacles, you want to lighten up your front end, you want the front wheel off the ground, and I believe that this final gearing will allow me to do that. Some of you may be saying, hey, that all sounds good. I want that for my bike. Um, that all sounds good, but you, you're missing something. Um, the thing that you're missing is that you're gonna lose top end on this bike. And I don't believe that that is a fair argument. Um, I have done some research and I've used gearingcommander.com to come up with these numbers. Um, these are not real, real numbers that I've come up with on this bike. I'm just going off a of gearing commander. So the stock tooth is 16 on the front, 42 on the back. And according to Gearing uh, Commander, in fourth gear at 45 miles an hour, you will be tacking at 3,222. And with this gearing change, I'm gonna be tacking 3,376, which is 154 more RPM at that gear, fourth gear at 45 miles an hour. At fifth gear and 65 miles an hour, the OEM stock setup will tack 4,162, and with my gearing proposed, it will tack 4,361, which is 199 more. And finally, at sixth gear at 85 miles an hour, the stock OEM gearing will tack out at 4,790, and with the new gearing, it'll tack 5,018, which is 228 more at 85 miles an hour at six gear. If I'm wrong about this, I am gonna eat crow and I am gonna come back on film and I'm gonna say so that I was wrong. I'm going back to stock gearing, but I'm gonna take a chance on this. And um, I, like I said, I will eat crow and I will say so if I think it's wrong. But I will also let Yev, who owns a V-Strom, and has gearing of 1741, and obviously that bike is much more suited for the freeway use. I'm gonna let him ride it and tell me that he hates riding my bike on the interstate or tell me, hey, it, it, it really does work, it's really not a problem. I'm gonna let him have an opinion, um, and we're gonna be able to take a ride this in, in, in about two weeks where we have another Africa Twin, and we will do comparisons to let you really have the final say. Okay, so I have uh, spent, um, I don't know, 10 minutes prepping this bike for these changes. I've removed my chain guard, my front sprocket cover. I've got my gear shift lever um, strapped up. I've also strapped my center stand to my front wheel because we have to untorque this nut and I don't wanna pull it off the center stand. I also have a restriction on my back wheel from spinning. Um, according to the manual here, um, it says that you can just shift this into six gear and it will hold this um, the shaft, but I have it in neutral. So I'm blocking my wheel and I also have a strap on my back brake holding everything, um, which will allow me to break the uh, torque on this nut. Okay, so time has come to um, crack this nut. Um, according to the manual, it's, it's on there at 40 foot pounds. Um, it's not super tight. Um, this is a 14 millimeter nut. And I've brought out um, the defense attorney, and I've brought out the chief negotiator. Now this is a Worth Carl Rose Supercell, um, but you know an alternative could be a Louisville Slugger or an Easton. 
Um, I'm not sure which one I'll use on this. I think I'm just going to go for the chief negotiator. Okay, like I said, this is a 14 um, millimeter nut. I'm using a 12 point socket. And here we go. And it's cracked. So this is a $15 chain breaking tool that I bought at Arbor Freight. It is very, very well made. And it claims it can break a 520, a 525, a 530 chain. Um, to be honest with you, I've only used it on a 520 chain and it worked flawlessly. Um, they do say that on a 520 and a 530 chain um, that grinding the head of this rivet down will help this tool tremendously. And since the 525 does have bigger pins, I'm going to go ahead and grind this down a little bit and then we're going to use this tool. Okay, so we're going to loosen up our adjusters um, with the, the 12 millimeter nut on both sides. And then with the 10 millimeter, we're just going to back that out. We're going to keep these kind of short, obviously, because we want um, to have the ability to tension our chain. So run these up a little bit. And that way your wheel can move up slightly and have uh, plenty of options to tension your chain. Okay, so I've removed all of the restrictions from my wheel spinning, and I'm using my um, 27 mil to break my axle. Okay, I guess you could remove your block there too. So since you have uh, made fun of my hammer that I had since I was like 18, I went out and spent a hundred bucks on this new hammer. Um, just kidding. This is like $2.99. Just keep an eye on your spacers here. We might just go ahead and clean those up. Time to um, crack these nuts and these, um, this is a 19 millimeter and they're torqued down to 74 from the factory. So these are a little tight. So get your, get your breaker bar. All right, so I'm installing the JT Sprockets 44 tooth, and this is the JTR 133244. And um, it's got two different bolt patterns. Um, one side is obviously too small, it doesn't fit over the stud, so you need to use the larger holes. Um, and lastly, um, I put a little bling on it. I, I cut this decal and put it on there just to add a little bit of flavor. Um, if you want one of those, just Make sure you make a comment in the comment section and I'll get you one. Okay, so this JT Sprocket's just um, a little bit thicker um, steel than the OEM. Um, the OEM kind of has a recessed area in the middle. And because of that, um, I feel like I'd like to have a few more threads on the uh, locking, locking slides here. So because I feel like it's not engaging like it did, um, 100%, I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on these threads and still torque it down to 74 foot-pounds. Okay, so the only thing I could recommend here is just make sure you torque these down in a star pattern. Okay, so this is the JT Sprockets, and this is the JTF 1370-16. We are not changing any um, number of sprockets. This is the OEM, and this is the aftermarket. Um, everything is the same. Of course, on OEM sprockets, and this is pretty standard on most bikes, 
they put this rubber cushioning on it so when the chain comes over, it actually hits here instead of, a, you know, kind of like knocking onto the chain. And the only, I've done some research and the only reason they do that is for, to make the bikes quieter in, um, from when they're doing the specifications on it. They do not offer any type of performance. It's only for noise reduction as far as I can tell. Once you have the splines lined up, and it can be a little finicky. Okay, so this is the, uh, the front sprocket bolt, and of course there's a washer. And um, just for good measure, uh, I'm putting a little bit of blue Loctite on there. And of course we're just gonna thread this on by hand because we're gonna wait till we have the chain um, before we can um, torque it to spec. Okay, so we're taking this master link from EK chain, and this is the screw-on type, which is the beauty of this chain, is that um, it's a screw-on, so you don't have to worry about these rivets, um, and you don't need a press tool, obviously, right? You just need the brake tool. Um, but they just recommend just greasing these guys up. And of course, you're gonna grease up your O-rings. And I say O-rings, but these are actually X-rings. This is an X-ring chain. And I would just say get, you know, get aggressive on this. You can always wipe off the excess. Okay, so we're at the point where we're just gonna roll this new chain around and onto the bike. Um, according to Gearing Commander, it 124 um, was the, that you could still use your OEM chain length, but we measured and I'm coming up with 126 with the new, the new gearing. Uh, or the new sprocket anyway. So we've got um, the master link on and we're going to put this on according to the instructions. So I guess you just want to alternate back and forth on these as you push the new plate on. Of course we've got O-rings on both sides and we're doing even pressing here on both sides. And you want to go until you can't do it by hand anymore. Okay, so you Back these off until you see the bald spot with doesn't have threads. Put it right at the tip. And then... Okay, so now we're just going to torque the, uh, the front primary sprocket to 40 foot-pounds. filming Michael Change's sprocket and chain, I kept trying to think of reasons or justifications for this modification. I mean, yeah, there can always be a downside to any modification. For instance, having a bigger sprocket will certainly affect the indicated speed on your speedometer. And oftentimes, as a YouTuber, you feel as though you need to prove to your viewers that whatever you chose to do in your video was not only a correct choice, but an important one at that. But as we begin filming the second part of the video where Michael was able to actually test out the sprocket on road and off road, the answer finally dawned on me. It doesn't matter if some folks downsize their sprockets or get larger ones. What truly matters is that by doing what he did, Michael was able to confidently get to his destination while having a great time and still being safe. And if your own personal mods allow you to do just that, then we think that is plenty of justification and is truly a win.